God bless you. Today is about focus, being faithful, being reliable, being trustworthy, walking in faith, not by sight, looking upon our own personal walks, our own personal devotions, recognition of correction, growing, looking where we are today from where we once were, repenting of past sin, confession of past sin. Faith is a personal between you and your Father in Heaven. It's verbal and it's practical. You can speak of your faith. You can live by faith, trusting, knowing that God hears and watches. It's continuous. It's a walk with God all your days. It's trusting in God. It's putting Him first. It's seeking His will and not the will of people. It's not about being a people pleaser. It's about being a God pleaser. Does God seek sacrifice or obedience? It's about obedience and trust in the Lord. You see, the things we don't know, we don't know. But it's God that instructs. It's God that leads. It's God that guides. When you know something, you're not going to intentionally do something, are we? Prime example. The current drama with Puff Daddy. Otherwise, in today's day and age, known as P. Diddy. How many of you grew up listening to his music? How many of you were fans of said music? How many of you listened to a whole selection of his artists? How many of you supported all the people that come out of all the nastiness in the world? But when you knew the nastiness they speak, when you knew the nastiness they do, did you still look at them in the same way and still support? No, because you're like, you know what? I can't support that. I don't agree with it. Now you know what his power and his money was being used on. Plenty of baby oil and some such. Now the study's not about him. What I'm getting at is now you know what they were doing and every album and every record that was ever bought of his went into his pocket. Have you considered it in this? Well, you know what? All that goes in the bin. When you know better, you do better. It's like when the people that were doing the witchcraft in the book of Acts, when they realized they took all the books and they joyfully burned them, they knew it was wrong. They didn't want it anymore. When you know better, you do better. It's not condemnation to a person. It's when you realize something is amiss. When you know something is not good. When you know something is not pleasing to God, then it's doing better. Simplification of the meaning for those that seem to take offense to it. You see, we live in a practical faith. You know my faith by my works, by my deeds, by my actions. That's the wording. To make sure you understand the meaning of the word work. It's deed. It's action. It's all based on translation. That's why there's such an argument on it. I will not support the unfruitful works of darkness. I will expose it. So no. Knowing all the people that went to the P. Diddy parties, if you were fans of any of their music, do you still want to support them? Have you questioned why they started scrubbing all of their social media? And it's, well, I don't know anything, but yeah, they definitely were linked. The same as all the people that went to that island many, many, many times. Epstein, remember? The little man with the glasses went there at least 26 times, but totally innocent. Have a little think on that. Or how many times did, uh, did the Clintons go over there? Many, 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 many times. But no, all totally innocent. If you know better, 
Do you do better? Or do you turn the blind eye? Self-examination. Faith is practical. Can't stand for the people that made all the films I used to once enjoy. Because when you know better, you do better. Grew up in that world. Not anymore. It's that understanding. When you know someone's doing villainy, there's no way I can justify supporting villainy anymore. It's that confession of I knew not. And it's that confession of forgive me because I helped support that at one time. Unknowingly. It's that recognition of it. Because it churns your stomach to know the nasty, naughty things they do. That's why it makes it easy to have nothing to do with them. Because you're convicted in the heart. Realising the things they have done and you start to wonder. How much of the pennies I gave did in that part? It's not to condemn. It's self-realisation. And it's, well, you know what, I don't want to help bad things in the world. We want to bring good things. We want to be the light, not the dark. We're seeking God's will. And our actions and our deeds and what we do. They are what shine either for light or for darkness. Things we have done unknowingly. Once we now know who they are, do we still support it? Certainly not. It's for our character to grow. And as that character grows, it learns. You see, God convicts our heart. He's the one that shows us our errors. And it's us denying self, picking up our cross and following Jesus daily. Yes, there is the battle and it is incessant. It is continuous, but it's standing up in faith, asking him for the strength and all humbleness for the help to endure, persevere and overcome so you don't give in to temptation. We're supposed to love everyone as ourselves, treating everyone the way we want to be treated, doing unto others we do unto ourselves. It's knowing that. When you know better, you do better. It's not turning a blind eye to those in intentional wickedness, knowing they do wickedness and supporting their wickedness and saying, I may not agree with their life choices, but that beat is ever so catchy. When you learn something, you can't just ignore it. I mean, it's your choice if you ignore it. But we're supposed to Walk in godliness according to the epistles. Or has that just offended some of you? Would some of you like to disagree with what Peter said or what Paul said? Or what Jesus said? Or should we say, Forgive me, I didn't know. And I will turn from it. And leave it at the foot of the cross because it's part of the old self. That's the recognition. Same thing with the movie industry. Music industry. When you don't know it, you don't know it. Fair enough. But if you do know it, and you have seen it, and I'm pretty sure you're aware of all the stuff in Disney. And if any of you got the old VHS tapes, you know exactly how bad it goes. Because you can't wipe them the same as they can today's digital age. Well, when you know, you know. And then it's, well, what do I do about it? It's like if you found out someone was urinating in your teacup, but you've been drinking tea at that place for years and you loved the tea, but you never knew they were urinating in it, but they were always urinating in it. And then one day, someone told you they've been urinating in your tea for years and they showed you a video of them urinating in your tea. And you went, but they make such a lovely tea. Would you then knowingly take the cup that you knew just been urinated in? They're like, here's your tea. 
Or would you say, no, I'm not taking that no more? Do you turn a blind eye? Maybe not the best way to explain it, but you understand what I'm getting at. Are you going to poison yourself for filth is what I'm trying to say. Certainly not. When you know better, you do better. If that's an offence to you, your blood's on your own head, but it ain't on mine. If you got to struggle with something, that's for you to deal with, for you to admit. It's not my fault if you have a struggle. Recognise it by conviction of the heart. And then give it to God and ask him to deal with it. Because God is all sufficient. He is almighty. He is most high. And it's through him that we have peace. It's through him we have joy. If our peace and our joy is actually in the things of the world, then we would rather have the world than him. But it's like, oh, but I really enjoyed that thing. But the other day you just found out what he did to that little one. Still going to turn a blind eye? When's enough enough? When is the line actually drawn? When is it stop the wickedness? When is it no, I will not support evil? When you know better, you do better. Yes, you got struggles and temptations, but you admit them to God. And you ask him to deal with them. 1 John 1 9. Don't make out. I've never used these verses. They are consistent. I've always been consistent. Even if it means going to the first page of my study notes. With the original study of if you know a thing to be wrong and sinful, under no circumstance intentionally do it. Trust in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That means you're going to have to trust. Because what did he do? He died so we can be forgiven. And he rose again the third day, conquering death. He died and we put our faith in him, trusting in him because he rose again. It's trusting in him for that forgiveness, that reconciliation between us and the Father, the Holy Spirit in us, guiding us in holiness. That as he works in us towards that following of Jesus' example, that understanding, that growing every day, book of Philippians, he will not stop the work he began in you. I do not teach sinless perfection. So when being accused of such, it is error. Now, if this is page one. This one, in this state, first page. We are reading from it. So you know it. Because what is it? It's believing and trusting in faith and salvation as the Holy Spirit works through us guiding us it's that building of our relationship with our father in heaven because that's who he is abba and it's our relationship with him we need to stay close to him because as we start to struggle with the temptations of the world we're no longer quite so close because those toes are starting to dip into the world it's for us to let go of lust and of greed, and of immorality, and of idolatry, and of idol worship. It's to love God with a good conscience and a pure heart, and a sincere faith. These things are needed. He's the one that washes us. He's the one that helps us. He's the one that guides us. He's the one that gives us the strength that we can do this. In all we do, it's helping others in earnestness, not because we feel compelled that we have to, it's because we actually love and care for others as ourselves. That's why it's love one another as yourself. Do unto others as you would do unto yourself. Treat everyone the way you want to be treated. And it's in humbleness and in repentance, not in pride nor haughtiness. It's not judging others. But it's guiding with love and with scripture. It's living for the Lord. 
It's focusing on him and putting him first, not ourselves. The road is narrow and it can be ragged and most rough at times. And it can be filled with many pitfalls and many traps. And the world will abound with deceptions. But don't let it wear you down. But stand steadfast in Jesus Christ. And let him free you from temptation and bondage and slavery to sin. So don't get weary. Because the devil's the one that comes to tire you out and to wear you out. He's the one that gives you all the problems of this world as we start to focus on his ways instead of God's ways. It's flesh versus spirit. It's the world that's full of violence and strife and crimes. But it's time for us in the body of Christ to come together in prayer for one another, uplifting one another. It's in prayer. It's for us to fight the good fight, to run the race to the finish. This is epistle. He says, run the race to the finish. We're warned not to fall away. We're warned not to be deceived. We're warned not to give ear to ear ticklers and doctrines of demons. We're warned to test the spirits. To see if they are of God. It's God that gives love and peace and wisdom in us. Because man's heart is desperately wicked who can know it. So a person will always quickly condemn and look to the darkness to accuse. But who is the accuser but Satan himself? He will use whom he can use to weaken others. But do not be worn out. Do not give up. We're in a day and age of deception. People are seeking peace and safety. But you have to stand steadfast in Christ. Because as this world tries to offer you peace and safety, sudden destruction does come. This world is trusting in its technology. In other people, instead of their personal relationship with God. That's the difference. The world is a mess. It's in turmoil. The world is full of wickedness and darkness. People are full of evil full of darkness because they not want the light Jesus warns of this or when Jesus heals and says sin no more lest you end up worse than you were before Jesus' words are not idle they have meaning it's up to us if we consider them and think on them when Jesus gives warning in Revelation to the seven churches this I have against you that means there's something he can have against us So it's then self-examination again, looking at ourselves, Lord, what do you have against me? What do I need to correct? Help me so I can. But it's up to us to come to that conclusion and to seek him for it and because of it. For he says, lest you repent, I will remove your lampstand. And he says it's to each church that has something that he has against them. So those ones he has something against, he gives a warning and he says, if you don't deal with this particular thing I have an issue with, I will remove your lamp. So it's up to us with those things we may have in us that need removing so he doesn't remove our lamp. Because after sin, do you still feel just as close to God just after you've finished your sinful, knowing sinful nature and act? Or do you feel like you've pulled yourself away from him somewhat? Self-examination. You have to look within oneself. You have to contemplate where you are in your walk, where your struggle is. And then give it to God and ask him to help you with it. To guide you from it. To encourage you to endure and persevere and overcome it with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. No better, do better. Living for the Lord. It's in joy, love and peace. That we have Christ in us. His wisdom in all meekness, in all pureness and gentleness. It's not self-seeking. It's the only way any word can be spoken. There's peace when you're focused on the Lord and with the Lord. But there's turmoil when you're not. 
I speak from experience. That's why I stay close to the Lord. The mockers and the scoffers, they are another topic. The gossipers within the church. It is written in the books, all that is mocked and scoffed, and all that is gossiped. For the church is sternly warned against gossipers. This battle in this world. Have you forgotten the majesty of God? Wait and know that I am God. God is in complete control. Look at the Psalms. Think of God and his love, his protection for his people, his deliverance for those that struggle. When he says that even the splendor that Solomon wore paled in comparison compared to the flowers that God creates. Don't you dare be desiring the prosperity of wicked people. Don't be jealous of what they have. They have those by wicked means. Don't be tempted by the worldliness. Don't lament what you don't have, but be content where you are. I say that while little mice scurry above my head. I don't know if you hear them when they make their noises. I certainly do. It's enduring and persevering in where you are. It's being peaceable in the Lord. It's easy come, easy go. Praise be the Lord. Just like when I had those incessant bites and I had to throw everything away. Now, I never did find out exactly what it was that bit me, but I'm hoping it didn't come from them as it's been here for a year I've been dealing with them. And it's endurance through trials. It's endurance through struggles. It's been nigh on a year since I've had a good night's sleep. But this has not stopped. This has been continuous. And it will be continuous and constant. Why? Because the word of God has to come out. For his word is the salve to our afflictions in life. He's the one that takes our grievances. He's the one that takes our grief, our sorrow, our loss. He's the one that brings us that peace. He's the one that gives us hope when we feel doom and hopelessness. He's the one that gives us rest when we are weary. It's only through him that we can do anything. And it's our commitment to him. Standing for him. We will not deny him. We will not quench the spirit. We are to stand for the Lord. This, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And it is to stand up against evil. To stand and rebuke all wickedness and spiritual darkness. And to always confess when one falls short. And what does it say about the one that falls down that always gets back up? It's always getting up. It's not staying down. It's not departing from the Lord. Do not lose your faith. Do not disregard what Jesus has done for you. But praise him and thank your humble, loving, almighty, most high creator. For all he has done. Because he is slow to anger. Filled with grace and mercy and patience and abundant love. Do not hunger for the things of the world. Do not f hunger for the things that are within the heart. Because when you focus on the things of the world, it's as a poison that poisons oneself. Instead, rather, give it to the Lord and ask him for the strength to persevere through it. Do not let those scorn you. Instead, let it be God that rebuke and chastise you. Do not let spitefulness, accusation, wear you away. Stand for the Lord. And let him bring you cheer in due season. It's us in praise and thanks to him, renouncing sin, so we not be offense to him. For the angels rejoice when one sinner repents. 
Anything we have is because of God, so we should be grateful. We should be most thankful for it. He is our judge. And we look at our relationships with others. That we are distanced from the ways of the world to put them to death. So that we can approach the mercy seat and call upon the Lord in all due diligence. A man must not long for the things of the world, but recognize his weakness. Look at the chink in the armor. Remember, we all have one. Put upon your spiritual armor and be ready for the attacks. It's one thing to recognize a weakness. It is something else to act on it. As it says, when sin brings temptation, then temptation breeds thought. When that thought goes into action, then the sin is realized and done. And sin leads unto death. Repent and turn from. Do not walk in it. Don't let it ensnare you. Don't let it tempt you. Instead, be disgusted by it. Don't sit down with the ways of the world, but overcome with Christ. We, we consider our words before we speak and ask God for a word on how to speak. Because God, when in the Exodus, is a pillar of fire to lead, but he is also a consuming fire for the wicked. And there is no darkness in God. So we must consider in all things. We need him to revive us from the ways of this world that has normalized itself before our own walks. So that we can keep walking earnestly and diligently and faithfully. We, we see that there's nothing but error in a world that doesn't seek God. And it's because of that we don't want to be a part of those things. Yes, there is always work to be done. But we are to be seeking God and rejecting evil. Not making a home in sin. The part thereof. It's the love of God that guides us so we know better to do better. And it is us in diligence. You reap what you sow by our actions. We are known by what we do. What shall we do? Our flesh is wretched and weak. When Paul said, the things I, I want to do, I do not. And the things I don't want to do, I do. A wretched flesh who will deliver me from this. When that heart's conscience no longer calls out. When you no longer care and accept sin. And justify it. And fight for it instead of against it. Get down on your knees and pray. If you have a fawn in the flesh, endure and praise the Lord for it. He gives us strength because all things are experienced, which means they are for a learning, something that has not yet been purified, something that still needs work. We all seek God for him to do his perfect work in us because we are imperfect. Much work must be done. It's a journey. To endure unto the end as faithful servants. To not depart. To not turn away. To not stay in wickedness. The epistles are very clear. It's up to us if we heed them. Or if we're going to be offended by them. All the things I always speak and read from are the scriptures. It's up to us if we're going to listen to them. Or put ourselves above them. Man needs restoration to the Lord. He is our shepherd. We the sheep. And when the sheep goes astray. It's God that brings them back. And it's Lord don't give up on me. It's Lord help and guide me. Strengthen me every step of the way. 
It's where you always need to be in your book. Always have your Bible. Carry one every day and praise him every day and study every day and pray every day. Don't get complacent. Just like Paul said, lest I be disqualified. Work out salvation for a trembling. God bless each and every one of you.